Hello everyone, this is Joseph Neut here and in this video I will talk about turbulence modeling, especially in steady state simulations. Now this is a cooperation with Gavin Tabor from the University of Exeter. Here you see the finished results, the velocity magnitude and the turbulent kinematic viscosity. And by the end of this tutorial I want you to understand what turbulent kinematic viscosity is. The goals are the following. I want you to understand turbulence in general and the reynolds average navier stokes equations. I want to show you what the case setup looks like and how to set the initial values and the boundary conditions, especially for the turbulent quantities. I'm going to run three simulations of a backward facing step, which is a two dimensional simulation. And for that, I will use three different turbulence models, the standard K epsilon model, the K omega model and a Reynolds stress model called LRR. I will not talk about Reynolds stress models here because I assume that if you want to use a Reynolds stress model, then you know what it is. This is what the geometry looks like. It's a two dimensional geometry. On the left hand side, we have an inlet with a width of six centimeters. And on the right hand side, we have an outlet with a width of nine centimeters. And uh, in between, we have a step. Uh, we will set the inlet values so we have a Reynolds number of approximately 44,000. For that we will use the simple foam solver. The official description is that it is a steady state solver for incompressible turbulent flow. So it is incompressible, it is a steady state solver for the first time. You can use it both for laminar flows and for turbulent flows. It is a single phase solver and it is an isothermal solver. As for the equations that are being solved, incompressibility means that the continuity equation reduces to the simple equation where the divergence of the velocity is zero. In the momentum equations, you can divide by the constant density and what you end up with is a pressure gradient term with the density. And in the diffusion term, you have the kinematic viscosity instead of the dynamic viscosity. And I want to stress again that the value P that we will use in the simulations is not the pressure, but rather the pressure divided by density. We have to keep that in mind. Steady state means that we do not have partial time derivatives and we will not have a physical time. Laminar turbulent is that uh, we can solve the equations for the laminar flow and there is also a possibility to have additional terms for turbulence modeling. And I will talk ab about these terms later on. Single phase means that there is no additional treatment, no equations for multi-phase modeling. And isothermal means that there is no energy equation. And the continuity equation and the momentum equations are not solved separately, but are rather combined into the simple loop. Now let's come to turbulence. What is turbulence? Turbulence is the chaotic change of field values like velocity or pressure in space and time. Nothing more and nothing less. You will find turbulence in flows with low momentum diffusion and high momentum convection. So if we take a look at the momentum equations, this is the convection term and this is the diffusion term. And if you have a low momentum diffusion then, and a high momentum convection, then this term is dominant and this term is less dominant. If you think of the Reynolds number, the Reynolds number is given by the velocity multiplied by a characteristic length scale divided by your viscosity, by your kinematic viscosity. And so if you have a high momentum diffusion, I mean a low momentum diffusion, this means that your viscosity is low and a high momentum convection, which means that your velocity is high, then you will have a high Reynolds number. If you have low velocities and low momentum convection and high uh, diffusion 
which means a high viscosity, then you, your Reynolds number will be low. And for high Reynolds number, we have a turbulent flow and low Reynolds number, we have a laminar flow. Now, here I have a schematic sketch of the time evolution of the velocity. Let's just say the X component of the velocity at a given point in space. So what we have, we have a stationary turbulent flow and we are measuring the X component of the velocity at a given point in space. This is what it looks like. We have a mean value and the velocity will oscillate around that mean value and we can decompose the velocity into this constant value and oscillations around this constant value and the oscillations are time dependent. Now these oscillations uh, occur on different lengths and time scales and you can imagine that in order to depict the smallest scales you need a very high calculation effort. It is possible but uh, usually you are doing something else. What, for example, in the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations we do is that we take the velocity and we say that we ignore the oscillations. We do not care about that. We just take the constant value here. But with that, of course, you are making some kind of error. For example, in the momentum equations. And it turns out that you cannot neglect this error. So if we neglect the oscillations, we have to add something else in order to account for these oscillations. And what uh, usually people are doing in simulations, we use the, the so-called turbulent viscosity, which is a model viscosity. It has nothing to do with the physical viscosity. It models the transport and dissipation of energy neglected by averaging. So because we say that we do not care about this value, we have to model this and we do that with an additional viscosity. And instead of using the physical viscosity in the momentum equations, we are using an effective viscosity, which is the sum of the physical viscosity and a turbulent viscosity, this model viscosity. And the question is, how do you calculate this turbulent viscosity? And the difference between different models is exactly this calculation of the turbulent viscosity. Before I go to the models, I would like to do here a public service and talk a little bit about turbulences. If you talk to engineers, they sometimes use the word turbulences and what they actually mean are vortices. And I want to stress that turbulences are not equivalent to vortices. If you take a look at the flow and you see vortices in that flow, it does not mean that it is a turbulent flow. You will also find vortices in laminar flows. So take care of that. Turbulence is only the chaotic change of field values in space and time. Nothing more and nothing less. So if you mean vortices, don't use the word turbulences. Okay, now let's just go to the models. In the standard K epsilon model, you introduce two additional quantities, K and epsilon, additionally to P and U, your pressure divided by density and velocity. K is the turbulent kinetic energy. It is defined like this. You have your oscillations in X, Y, and Z direction. You square those, you calculate the average, you sum them up and because it is a kinetic energy, you have here a 0 0.5 and this K represents the energy that is in the turbulence. And you have a quantity epsilon, which is the turbulent dissipation and it represents the rate of dissipation of the kinetic energy, of the turbulent kinetic energy. And you calculate your turbulent viscosity with uh, this equation you have a constant value 0 0.09 and then you multiply k squared divided by epsilon. 
and you have two additional transport equations one equation for k and one equation for epsilon with a convection term a diffusion term and additional terms source terms I will not talk about these equations because the tutorial lasts long enough as it is. In the k omega model, you introduce two quantities, like in the k epsilon model. The first one is again the turbulent kinetic energy, but here you introduce another quantity, omega, which is the specific dissipation rate, and uh, here you calculate the turbulent viscosity with this formula k divided by omega. And here you also have a transport equation for k and one for omega. Now I want to talk about the boundary conditions and especially the inlet conditions of the turbulent quantities k, epsilon and omega. Now the point is that in a simulation you never know those values or it's very rare that you know those values and what you do you can give estimations of those values and you have a formula like this for that for example for a turbulent kinetic energy you take your inlet flow velocity you multiply it with the turbulent intensity which is given in percent so two percent five percent so you take your velocity you multiply it with 0 0.05 for five percent then you square it and then you multiply it with 1.5 for epsilon, you take 0.09 to the power of 0.75 and then you multiply it with k to the power of 1.5 divided by L and L is proportional to your characteristic inlet length k. Now for omega, we have this estimation where you divide epsilon by k and as you will see, this is a very, very rough estimation. And again, I want to stress that these are not exact solutions for your inlet values for the turbulent quantities these are only estimations so it is always a very very good idea to put your inlet but also your outlet as far away from your region of interest as possible now here you see the geometry again on the left hand side we have the inlet on the right hand side we have the outlet and on the inlet we will set the velocity so we have a Reynolds number of approximately 44,000 and we have to calculate also the turbulent kinetic energy, the dissipation rate and also omega on the inlet. Good. Now I want to jump in but at first I want to show you the source code of simple foam solvers incompressible and simple foam because i want to show you how turbulence modeling enters the simulation so for that i open up simple foam here you see the header then a couple of header files are included the time is created the mesh is created and then the fields are created and actually this create fields is located in the same folder then your p field is taken from zero P, again pressure divided by density, then your velocity is taken and then your phi is created. And phi is either taken from your latest time step if it is um, in that folder or like in zero. If it is not uh, defined then it is calculated out of the velocity. Then again the turbulence model is created, then you enter a while loop. And there it says time equals and this is always a confusion for students because it although it says time equals this is if I go back to the Navier-Stokes equations here we saw the steady state uh, version of the equations and there is no physical time so when it says here time equals what it really means iteration number equals it's not a physical time so the, let's keep this in mind. Then we enter U equation, which is in the same folder. Here U equation, and we set up a vector matrix with the divergence term. 
which is this term here and then this term turbulence div def ref and I will talk about it a little bit later on but what this is actually this is the diffusion term and the turbulent term. And then we have FV options but we will not use this so here you can imagine a zero and then we solve the vector matrix with the pressure gradient term with this term. So we here we solve the momentum equations and then after Oops. After that, we saw we enter P equation here, and there we also have an inner while loop with the non-orthogonal corrector. So we will have to set a number in system FV solution for the for these non-orthogonal correctors. And here we solve the pressure equation here. So we calculate a new pressure and with this pressure divided by density. So, and with this p value we update the velocity and once we update the velocity after these inner loops then we go back and calculate turbulent values again and then we go to the next iteration number good now i want to talk about this term here this diff def ref for that i will open up the K epsilon model, I mean the turbulence model, incompressible, RIS models, and here you find all the models that are available. I will enter K epsilon. And here, if I scroll down, I will find this entry div def ref, and this returns these two terms. I will not talk about what these terms are. Uh, but important is that we have, for example, a Laplacian term with a new effective. And as I mentioned, these are the, these two terms, the physical diffusion and the turbulent terms. And so we have Laplacian and this new effective. This is what I was talking about. That here we have an effective viscosity. And the question is, what is this effective viscosity? And I will go to the general RIS model because this is the same for all the models. So here we have the header and in the bottom here we have this new effective and this is the sum of new t which is the turbulent viscosity and your physical viscosity which you define in constant transport properties. Now the question is how do you calculate your turbulent viscosity and this is for example in k epsilon if I scroll up here in this line new t is cmu and cmu is defined up here it's 0 0.09 this is what i showed you here 0 0.09 multiplied by k by so 0 0.09 multiplied by k squared divided by epsilon and this is exactly what i showed you here and then we take this value this turbulent viscosity we sum it up, new t plus the physical viscosity, and then here we return these values with the effective viscosity. And then this enters the momentum equations here. And this is how turbulence modeling enters the simulation. I wanted to show you that. Now I can start with, uh, with setting up the base case, but before I do that, I would like to stop recording now. I hope that you enjoyed the first part of the tutorial and that you learned something. I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the second part of the tutorial.